об этом событии будет. Hello? Hello. Oh, hey, okay. I'm not alone. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hi, everybody. Hey, I assume we'll get Sean soon. Hello. Hey, Chris. I see we also have Victor and Johannes is on his way in. Hello, everyone. Hey, Sean. Hello. Hi. Hey, hello. Let's wait two more minutes for people to join. I see that uh, Javier is here. Maybe we should start by congratulating Javier. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, guys. If we were in a bar, uh, this round would be on me. 
It's exciting. Yeah, and hopefully maybe now we finally can join. Uh, uh, well, so when, I, when we were re when we were ready to join the foundation, now we're gonna change the uh, place. Where would it say? Yeah, you can you can tell us that you can't afford the the membership. <laughs> <laughs> right, but are we are we dropping from the Linux Foundation now? I think we're Is gonna go. Something? I think we're gonna. Yeah, go. let's let's just uh, get into it. <laughs> Uh, so thanks for attending the uh, UCF tech meeting in, in December. This meeting will discuss our options and um, the board has discussed for many months. Uh, we are proposed, uh, we are going to move on with a merge with the OpenJS Foundation and um, some of the background here is that um, I think Abe can speak a little more, but uh, generally we will feel like the financial structure uh, was how the membership uh, uh, structures is not sustainable for UCF to be a standalone project for another year. And one of the options we do have is that we have an offer from the OpenJS Foundation to be uh, moving our project and moving our tech into under the OpenJS Foundation. Um, so OpenGS is a standalone organization managed by Linux Foundation, and it has a governing board and also have a cross project council similar to our TAC. Um, and they have four staff members, and it's a foundation that's hosted many prominent JavaScript uh, infrastructure projects such as Node.js, Electron, uh, Webpack, um, and AMP and MP, uh, the MVM. So, um, have, have you guys heard of OpenJS? You um, any questions? What, what are some example projects that are under it? Sorry, I'm going to copy think, some slides. Sorry, I didn't see. Yeah, Node.js is the biggest one. Um, I can also go to there. So they have it host mainly JavaScript infrastructure projects. So. Um, so the uh, the the uh, the biggest one, Node.js Webpack, and um, Electron, Dojo, jQuery, and there are others uh, here that you know that we many of them we already we currently use. Mm -hmm. So so it kind of like makes sense, right? Yeah. So it's. I think it makes sense because it, it's like a much bigger foundation and it has, uh, it's financially sustainable by itself and it has a governing board and also a technical board as well. Um, and it's kind of, uh, because a lot of our project today is also JavaScript based and, you know, we, even though OpenJS is like very broad, idea is not specifically visualization focused, but we could create our own working group under OpenJS um, and moving our attack um, into, into, the, into there. So there's some points on how it emerged gonna, uh, technically it's gonna happen. So um, UCF, we can we will create its own collaborative space under OpenJS, and existing tag which can just port over to cover the collaboration space. The UCF members can become uh, OpenJS members, and OpenJS does not require OF membership. So you know UCF members only need to pay for uh, OpenJS membership fee, um, and and Brian, correct me if, if I'm wrong, last time when we have a chat, UCF member will have our first year membership fee waived, right? That's, that's correct. That's for the, um, specifically for the members of, of the foundation, yeah. Okay. Any, uh, anything I missed in here or do you guys have any 
question. Uh, so, um, so, so, so generally the membership costs uh, should be lower for each member, right? And so one, you don't, so, so we had the problem with uh, the Urban Computing Foundation that we needed to pay twice, right? For if you were not already a member of Linux Foundation, you first had to become a member of Linux Foundation. And then you also had to, so you had to pay for that. And then you had to pay for the Urban Computing Foundation, you know, and then obviously out of the Urban Computing Foundation, a lot of that budget was then also, you know, you know, paying for overhead for Linux uh, Foundation. So that was the kind of struggle. And here we only have to pay for the OpenJS Foundation. And I think the price tiers are a little bit lower. So the total cost will be, will be less for each uh, member. Is that right, uh, Ryan? Um, I, in general, I believe that's correct when you take into account the Linux Foundation membership as well. Um, I, I think maybe one of the other things to, to look at here as well, just kind of set, setting aside the actual cost of the membership tiers. One of the, one of the advantages of combining with a larger organization is that you get some economies of scale on the management side of things. Uh, and that, you know, just to provide some transparency to the discussions that were happening on the governing board, um, there was some concern that UCF hadn't quite met the you know, kind of the minimum bar for scale uh, to be able to, you know, both manage itself, which is where, you know, a good, a good deal of the funding kind of needs to go because there's obviously human costs associated with uh, getting things up and running and keeping things running, uh, but then also being able to, you know, make additional investments in the ecosystem uh, that, that really help the projects grow. And specifically, I'm thinking about things like um, having marketing resources, uh, being able to you know, participate as a, you know, as a primary project in events, you know, significant sized events. Uh, you know, there are advantages to being in certain, you know, being, being associated with certain projects and being in certain rooms that help um, uh, cross, -poll cross pollinate the adoption of the different projects as well as the contributors. So there, there are quite a, few, quite a few reasons that, you know, that this is potentially on the table here. Um, I, I really do think, though, if the goal is to have impact, uh, to you know, to to really be able to um, get these economies of scale for what it takes to actually run one of these things behind the scenes, this is a pretty good option. And in terms of just you know, kind of disclosing where I come from here, how the governing board knows this, but um, I, I've been working on OpenJS Foundation for a number of years here at, here at the Linux Foundation. Um, I came in right around the time of the JSF and Node Foundation merger and helped operationally on the back end. So I've got, you know, a pretty good perspective here on, you know, the, kind of the nuts and bolts of um, what makes these foundations run. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Certainly, uh, you know, we want to be as open and transparent through this as possible. So one question that I... Yeah, Go so ahead. this is Javier. I wanted to ask, uh, what do you guys think is going to happen with the with the existing um, members? Uh, and have we with the board? Would you talk to the board? I mean, like, is that in a way is what one of the things that you know I was interested in about the Urban Computing Foundation is the fact that uh, it was supported by key, um, let's say, like the stakeholders of the industry on um, mm -hmm. this thing. So. Uh, Will they will they turn over and uh, is there already other other uh, kind of like contributors to the to this uh, to the OpenJS Foundation too? We yes so um, similar to Urban Computing Foundation, OpenJS Foundation is a member supported organization. Um, there are a couple of things though that come with the scale of OpenJS Foundation. It, it is um, you know looking at it effectively. Where does the money come from to pay for all the, the structures that keep things running? Uh, it is a bit more diversified. Uh, they have, you know, for example, the certification program um, around Node.js, which is some diversification from just membership dues. Um, there's a conference that gets run every year that is also a, you know, a, a source of financial support. Uh, as for the existing members, um, just kind of you know, recognizing the fact that, that the existing members have helped Urban Computing Foundation get to where it is uh, but also have been sustaining it through this time. Um, you know, the, the plan is to, to bring them on um, with credit for dues paid essentially <laughs> uh, for the next year. And then at that point, then they can make a decision whether they continue their membership or, or discontinue their membership. 
and that's more of a governing board topic. But our hope is obviously that you know that that the folks who are involved and who are helping support these projects are able to stay involved and continue to support these projects. Um, yeah. I mean, from but, a practical from a practical perspective, right? I mean, it was very exciting to have a board consisting of a number of of key players. But uh, in reality, you know, Uber was a big member. They very rarely participated in the board, and the topics that we've been talking about for the last, you know, three, four, five months is, you know, really just related to how are we going to continue this foundation. So it has just been, you know, big meta discussions about, you know, how we're going to do funding, you know, what kind of options we have to, to kind of sustain this. And so this has been a very, you know, in a way unproductive time where we haven't really talked about like bringing in new technologies or new, you know, initiatives or, you know industry partnerships and so on the things that would be really exciting and so it feels a bit like we're not we don't really have critical mass we don't really have we, we're mainly spinning our wheels and um, you know we want to focus on having a really good home for that secures the open governance and and we'll still be able to meet we'll still be able to you know run our attack and 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 this will be a great space where we can collaborate um, we won't be you know, kind of board members because the board memberships here are much more expensive. And but um, I think it'll be a very neutral space for us to collaborate. And I, I, I wouldn't necessarily count on Uber staying here, uh, but um, you know, Foursquare certainly will. Unfolded will be here. I, um, you know, Google, big companies like Google, I think, are already platinum members, so it would be easier to 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 reengage with them. And, um, you know, because the fees on our lower bar is lower, it should be easier to invite. I, I was working very hard to invite a number of small, smaller companies to the Urban Computing Foundation. But when you added up the two fees, it just became so expensive. I mean, you've been in that situation yourself, uh, Javier, um, that it's just a little bit too expensive to join, right? And I'm hoping that that will be easier now. So what you're saying essentially it's going to be cheaper. It's there's already quite a, a bit of a structure in there, and nothing is going to change much. So right. So sounds like, yeah. And it's still it's like, because one of the things that we we I think was uh, opinion around urban computer foundation as I say was the the branding on itself. But it sounds like we can. Well, first of all, we're not benefiting that much. So um, as long as and this will also I assume will continue kind of supporting the legal part around defending. I mean, all the all these other parts of Sun Street. So I think it sounds like a no-brainer. Yes. Just just to jump in on some of these things, that, you know, that that really is the goal here, right? Is making sure that we have a sustainable home for these projects. Um, you know, making sure that there's enough funding to ensure that you know that all the the back end structures that we take care of on our end are still there uh, to help you know. To help you really focus on your projects and make sure those projects themselves are technically sustainable. One of the advantages of being in a larger foundation really is, you know, that there's there's less of a question of do we have enough members to keep the lights on next year, um, and that is one of the major advantages here. And one of the things we discussed in the um, in the governing board meeting was that there are governance structures within OpenJS Foundation that effectively allow the TAC to port over, right? So that that. The goal here is minimum disruption to the projects. The goal here is, is to make sure that, you know, that, that these concerns about whether the lights stay on are no longer concerns. And I think we've got a pretty good option for that. Um, I, I won't go into the specific details. We went into them pretty deeply in the, in the last governing board meeting, but, um, you know, that's, it does seem like there are quite a few good things that can come out of this. And it seems like a fairly straightforward path forward. I'd like to add a bit of perspective. Uh, you know, you were saying, you know, it seems like a no brainer. And and I think it really is a no brainer to everybody, actually, except for maybe Joby, like, in the sense that we literally just joined the, the board. But but at the same time, I'm completely on board and Joby is completely on board with this move because um when when we joined we just basically broke even by us joining on on keeping the lights on for another year without that we would have been in the red um and it's really difficult to see uh, additional groups coming on to 
bring us to any kind of scale compared to what OpenJS Foundation can offer. Um, and and so you know, uh, it it was it was a bit of a surprise, but also turned into an interesting opportunity to to join as a member and then have the kind of first topic that come up be like, oh, actually, we're not really sure how we're going to we're not really sure how we're going to grow this foundation further. We, you know, it's not just um, we, we have a bunch of options on the table. And if we don't join OpenJS, we still have a bunch of options on the table because we are now um, at least broken even for another year. But, uh, uh, you know, the the like my main priority is to keep the governance and code open and alive and have a vibrant tech and have a vibrant community of contributors. Like I really saw that all of the impressive work that's being done in this foundation is being done in the code and technical side of things, not really in kind of the back end governing side of things for a while. We haven't really been leading many initiatives on that front. And so it seems like um, OpenJS is a place where we can go and really focus on what we're good at, focus on what we enjoy doing, what we've attracted a lot of attention um, and, and contributors for. You know, which is actually like the engineering work and the the technology that we develop, um, and basically deprioritize the policy side and and you know things that the really policy and marketing side of things that the board was originally developed to to kind of promote. I mean, um, the history of the board is something I've been learning about when I joined, and it was originally like Google, Facebook, Uber, and they all had. Um, you know these these plans on initiatives that they were going to do and many of them just didn't really pan out on the policy side of things but what has persisted through this whole thing has been you know DECGL, KeplerGL, VizGL, all these projects that have been growing and and um you know have a lot of users that and, and developers that really love our project so i'm hoping that like my priority you know as a kind of a in, in as a board member is to keep the governance and code open um you know maintain participation and carve out a great space for us all to work in and then keep increasing that uh engineering participation with like organic growth and um having a space for us to all kind of join together and meet every month um and all the time meet virtually very well said justly spoken No, I think we all agree, and in a way, uh, so uh, it was also like we, we all, busy. I mean, the people that are now on this team, on this project, is, is because we believe on the on on the DECGL ecosystem and, you know, and the potential that it has, and I agree, we'd rather, you know, like work, talk about these things than more like, you know, like the, so the, yeah, so, I, and, and I think there's a lot of potential just if we just keep focusing on improving the technology. I, I'm I'm a firm believer that we are in a very strong position to provide um, the most powerful open source visualization framework that exists for geospatial data, depending on how you. So I think I think you know we are in that position. If we keep investing and attracting you know, like uh, um, um, contributors and so on, I think it will, it will be the best. So if this uh, foundation give us the platform to 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 focus on that, I, I think this is what we at the end of the day that's what we all want. Yeah, I mean, my view, uh, and I think Sean also, uh, as we looked at it, right, so this is a, you know, we met uh, also some representatives, and, and it was a very good, it felt like a very warm welcome, it felt like we were getting a hug. Uh, and so it's, a, so, you know, I, there's no question in my mind that this is a very, you know, good, good home. I think the question was, is it like the best home for because one, we are not quite the JavaScript technology, right? We have also, you know, support for Python, and we have support for we. Have, there's even a C, partial C++ port of of Deck, and going forward, we may, you know, expand into in, into other things. But we still have a very strong core. It's it's really, you know, focused on the browser, and 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 so it's not unreasonable. So that was one kind of thing um, that. Um, it could be a little bit um, of a label to put ourselves in a JavaScript foundation, but uh, not enough to really be a yellow flag. And the, the other thing is that we and we actually did um, look at this. So so we so we feel like if there was a foundation with more focused on big data, 
or you know visualization or and, and when we looked over at the apache foundation all of the cool big data projects are there so you know um, apache arrow and all the different you know big databases and and, and so on so we actually even met with the with the apache foundation but it's um, it's a very different setup and it would be quite uh, it would be possible but it would be quite uh, a lot of effort and and some of the projects uh, that we have in Novan Computing Foundation, like the maps, and would not be willing to go through the necessary work. And so um, it, it just seems um, that there could be some long term benefits, but, but it doesn't seem uh, worthwhile to. So, so we have, uh, so the board has looked into, but I'm trying to say, board has turned stones and looked into different options. We haven't just jumped at, at OpenJS because it's there. Yeah, I think this might be a good place to mention too is that um, you know OpenJS is is really centered around JavaScript. Uh, however, you know in practice, it has not been. It, I'm trying to think of a good way to say this. It's not terribly opinionated about the specific projects that it accepts. Mainly looking to make sure that the projects are a good fit, uh, that they do have obviously some intersection with the JavaScript ecosystem. Um, but you know, it's, it's not a um, it's not a foundation that says, for example, we only accept infrastructure projects, or we only accept you know browser-based projects, or or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, it's there's been a, a good deal of of understanding within the Cross Project Council, which is the the OpenJS Foundation's equivalent of the TAC. Um, Good understanding the cross project council is that there are a lot of different projects that serve a lot of different needs and have a lot of different project communities. And um, there's been a lot of willingness as well to, to look at expanding in different directions. I think the main thing to, to take away from this as well, uh, you know, from what I'm saying there specifically is that, you know, it, it's, it, I think you could look at this as being a place that would be a welcoming home. Um, obviously, we need to go through their process. But we had some thoughts on that, on making sure that uh, you know the, the, the projects would go through the the same onboarding process as other projects as they come into the OpenJS Foundation. Um, the other side of that, though, is being able to maintain the identity of open visualization and, and geospatial visualization and, and mapping and things like that. Uh, and there are structures within the the technical governance of the OpenJS Foundation that allow for effectively self-organized groups. And the, at least the initial thought is the TAC could become one of those self-organized groups. Um, we call them uh, collaboration spaces. But basically, you know, the idea is that there's a, with a, with a minimal amount of governance bus, um, could effectively carve out the same identity as is currently you know, occupied by the UCF TAC uh, within the OpenJS Foundation. And so, yeah, and so, I mean, uh, sometimes what helps me is to just understand, like, what, what does the output look like once this is all done? And, and to, to me, my current understanding is the, we've got the board, that would disappear. That would no longer exist. So Joby, Foursquare, uh, you know, Uber, and here, the board members and those company affiliations would become... OpenJS members, but they wouldn't be participating in the board unless they, you know, did what OpenJS requires to be a participant in their board. Um, and there's no expectation that we do that, which is mostly a financial thing. Um, there are some uh, board roles that get elected in. We're not expected to be like running, you know, so that kind of goes away. The TAC we have, which is the meeting we're at right now, and all of the GitHub organization based uh, kind of collaboration and, and um, any kind of architectural stuff that stays intact. Like that doesn't change. It will maybe get a different name and it'll be a collaborative space under OpenJS, but um, there will be no change because it doesn't need to change. And that's the whole, that's where all the work is getting done. So we don't want to touch anything there. Um, the other thing uh, is that, you know, we have, there's a couple of trademarks that we're trying to keep maintained. The MapSend has a trademark. We also have a variety of domains that get paid for every year. Those would get transferred over too. 
and and so uh, I think I'm not missing anything. I think that's it. Um, one of the kind of really interesting things there is the Map Zen project can get transferred over um, into OpenJS. You know, at the participation level that their representatives want to participate in. They don't meet monthly. They don't have a TAC like like the rest of the projects do. Um, that's yeah, that's very active, but there are still people that are, and there are very active forks of Map Zen, um, and so it was kind of an interesting community to navigate. And and I think that there's like um, always the open. It's always an open door for those forks to want to come back in and participate. But at the moment, um, it seems like from the representatives we've talked spoke to. Um, the maps and original like GitHub organization, which isn't tiles in and it isn't, um, you know, uh, what's on first and it isn't uh, 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 forgetting some of the other ones. I mean, there's like transit land and all the different sub projects of maps and that have forked off. Those would not be moving along with us because they're not actually part of the, the foundation. Um, and so it was, it's kind of unrelated to VizGL. It's not really what we discuss every month, but you know, the whole point is to not drop anything when we make a move, if we make a choice. Um, and so it's it's important to consider all of the projects that are inside of uh, the foundation and figure out what's you know what their um, participants really want, and make sure that we do something that satisfies their needs. Yeah, that, that's really well said. So just um, at least it, you know, kind of responding to some of the things you said here, in terms of the logistics, it's actually even simpler than transferring everything over. Uh, everything basically stays where it is. Uh, OpenJS Foundation effectively financially adopts these different obligations, whether it's uh, maintaining the maps and mark, which is the, the only registered trademark currently, uh, maintaining the common law marks, which are effectively all the other ones, uh, maintaining the domain registrations and everything else. So that, <clears throat> from a logistical perspective, is extremely straightforward. Um, to your second point about MapSend and you know, good, a good portion of the work is being done in closely related projects, but projects which aren't underneath the, you know, the banner or the, the umbrella of the UCF. Um, in many ways, this is, it's an opportunity for them, but also should be reassuring. So there's an opportunity there of, you know, if, if they have uh, an interest in effectively, you know, reorganizing or, or organizing underneath the OpenJS Foundation, there is a project lifecycle process, which is, you know, very well tended by the Cross Project Council to become an official OpenJS Foundation project, uh, which then provides access to the various resources and support of the foundation. Obviously, that's optional, but it is, you know, that door is absolutely open. On the other hand, if the goal is to work effectively downstream from the original maps and code uh, and the and you know maps and itself proper uh, is is something which is not going to be maintained actively going forward uh, then it is a place you know it's effectively it's a home but, you know openjs foundation has this this idea of emeritus or archived projects where you know, there's not really activity going on the repos may be archived but you know the trademarks are still being maintained domains are still being maintained there's you know a backup owner on the github board so that effectively these things can't be picked up and taken somewhere else by somebody who may not have the greatest of intentions. So it, it, there are you know, many different ways to look at this. I think kind of the key thing is this doesn't mean the end of these projects. Uh, even if it does mean that they go into archive state, it doesn't mean the, the end and they are still being tended. Uh, and in a more practical thing, I mean, one of the things that we kind of like in a way I've been missing particularly about the Urban Computing Foundation and the, and the management of the Linux Foundation was, for example, recently there was this, um, there's the FOSS 4G conference, right? The free and open source software for geospatial conference. It's a very, very large conference. And there was no abstract on DECGL, for example. And that was, I found it kind of like that was a real pity, right? Because we were kind of like missing to kind of like, and, and that's the kind of thing we said like, oh well, gosh, I wish there was someone that would say, hey guys, send abstracts here. Now, there's these opportunities, you know, for promotion. Because if that is all too organic, is there 
what type of resources could you know like uh, this uh, foundation kind of like give us to kind of like overcome some of this? Because we have contributors, but no one actually looking at growing the community from a marketing and you know this type of perspective. Yeah, that that's a good question. So there, I think there are two aspects. Oh, sorry, uh, I think think there there are two aspects of this to consider. Um, one is that OpenJS Foundation does have funded marketing staff, um, and you know to be to be kind of clear on on the marketing folks' roles here, it's it's effectively working to uh, help promote the obviously the foundation itself, uh, but also the projects as they you know they go through a release or something like that, you know, making sure that these things get promoted, um, providing a place to, to do write-ups on high traffic websites, for example. Um, if there's a, a recent release and, and you wanna tell the world about it, somebody who can help you with that process. Um, the other side of that is kind of the more project specific question that you were asking, you know, who, who can give us a poke that there's a, uh, that abstracts or, <laughs> Are, are being submitted right now for a conference that you might be interested in. Typically, we do rely on the projects to be the experts in that as opposed to the foundation. So that that sort of you know speaker placement type work is something that we're not currently doing for projects. Um, with that said, the hope is that we can provide support on the other things which frees up the bandwidth to be able to do that directly within the project. So that I hope that kind of puts some some context on the on the rough boundaries of, of marketing work. I will also say that one, you know, one other kind of key thing to keep in mind here too, is that we do run a fairly good sized conference. I'm on the car, so it was. <laughs> I'm sorry, I think I can't get over it. It all caught up. I know where it's getting up. Uh, no. Gosh. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. You don't hear me. It, it's a little crunchy for me. Oh, <laughs> I think we just lost him. Give him a moment to rejoin us. I think uh, one one thing I wanted to to bring up was I was hoping to, uh, I mean, because the end state of all this would be basically the tack survives. Um, I mean, and the tack like is what is primarily the function of of everything that gets done um, if we if we merge over because the board doesn't exist anymore. There's no other body besides the tack. Um, would I was hoping to get kind of the perspective of all the current TAC members. Um, not everybody is is here today, so you know I don't feel like at the conclusion of this meeting that we'll really have heard all the voices. At least I haven't yet. Um, but it is really important to to me that all of the people that are actively contributing to the TAC and participate in the architectural choices really like want this too, like, you know, can come to the come to the same position that I've come to where they want this too. And if they don't, um, I, also, I really want to understand that too, so that it can, it can play a role in helping us figure out what's right, because the, the goal is at the end of this to accelerate, not decelerate. So we currently feel like we're stagnant or decelerating. And so we're hoping that we can make a change that'll help accelerate. Um, so I don't know if there's another opportunity for us to do that before we have to vote on the motion, but I would like to, to kind of hear from Xiaoji and some of the other big contributors to, to, our, uh, to our code, to the foundation's code projects. Yeah, I think the plan was to share the information that we're trying to make, that we're planning to make this change, right? and um, give some time to to get feedback we are probably overdue for a bigger uh open governance planning meeting 
if we schedule that soon, we could also bring it up there. Yeah, and even and I individually, uh, we already met with uh, Randy from MapZen and floated this idea with him. And to him, it's like, uh, since they don't have an active, they don't have resources actively maintaining MapZen and uh, keep uh, working with the foundation, like actively working with foundation. For him, it's uh, as long as the projects move to a foundation under LF that keep them so they have the minimal uh, support keeping the project open source. Uh, they are fine with whichever direction we go. So, and that's for that. And then I think OpenJS has a, OpenJS has a Emirates tier for project that's uh, kind of in a uh, that kind of in a back burner kind of uh, status. So perhaps they more likely uh, will be moved into the Emirates projects group. Yeah, and I, I, I've had a brief uh, sync with Xiaoji and I mean, she doesn't raise any flags. I think she has been more frustrated than anyone with, uh, you know, Uber's uh, passivity in the Urban Computing Foundation. And, uh, um, you know, I think making a fresh start makes sense to her. And maybe just to kind of bring things back to the kind of full circle to the beginning of the conversation. Um, one of the advantages of ho effectively hosting the UCF projects under the large, you know, larger umbrella of a larger foundation is that there's a lot less exposure to the activity or inactivity of any given member, any given financially supporting wow. member. Um, it does provide quite a bit of diversification, provides the uh, economies of scale and provides stability as well. Uh, to the point about not not making a decision today, I fully agree. <laughs> this is something which, you know, it, it's not a it's not a small decision, and and it it is the sort of thing that it should be well considered, uh, and you know, should be should be gathering feedback. You know, the goal is not to ram this through. Um, the goal is obviously you know to to not let it go forever, but at the same time, um, if there are concerns or if there are questions. Um, you know, Ib, Sean, Chris, um, Johannes, we've, we've been discussing this quite a bit <laughs> recently. And I think any of us would, would probably be able to answer or, or at least, you know, take the feedback if you have feedback. Yeah, I mean, from my perspective, right? I mean, we've work, worked through this. So, so this is a, um, two, this is, requires a majority vote in the, in the board, we currently have, uh, you know, uh, five voting members. So it requires four out of five members. And uh, we have, we're still, you know, checking Uber's opinion, but we have four members who are in favor. So we are able to make a vote in the board today and make this change. So, so this can happen. What we want to do now is basically um, make sure that we communicate uh, and also listen. The, the decision could be changed if some very strong flag is coming up, but this is basically the intention and what we expect to happen. Yeah, thanks for summarize it. I think that... <laughs> brings it to the point. <laughs> I thank you and thank you for all the work. Yes. No You're problem. Yeah, I think <laughs> any any of us are any of us are here to listen, not just today, but you know, over the next weeks to understand perspectives that you know might take some time to be mulled over. Uh, we'll be posting uh, you know issues publicly on all of our projects so that people understand um, our intention, uh, and they can leave comment and discuss further. Because, yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we just really don't want to be alienating groups. That's and doing things that are really against 
contributors' wishes. Um, we don't think that this is that, but we we want to be creating that space where that can be voiced and discussed, and you know, questions can be raised, and we can just we can just talk through it. Yeah, I mean, what is pretty clear by the fact that we can do this is that these decisions are not irreversible, right? If there in the future should emerge an incredible big data visualization foundation, you know, we could have another look at this, but uh, it's obviously not a change we want to do very frequently given the overheads involved. And so we, we want to find something that's a good home for, for, for at least a few years and, and hopefully in the long term. But, uh, but it's not uh, something that I think we have to agonize you know too much over because yeah it's not forever uh, you know it's it's it seems to be a good choice for the next step to accelerate um, i think that's what the board's been discussing for our, since i've joined is how do we accelerate what we do and yeah, yeah. Know, encourage more organic growth and improve our brand and help more people understand you know all the effort that goes into the projects we do and the value that they can bring them if they pick you know pick our projects up and use them and contribute to them um so, so can we ask uh, the open js foundation as a first car like start, that they design a logo for us could that be you know the first request <laughs> do you guys have resources for that yeah <laughs> I, I don't know we want to outsource that uh, part but uh... Uh, we we really need that logo i mean like it's killing me on the market pictures <laughs> yeah let's have that as our first uh the, as a topic for our first uh... it might be, it, it, i'm not joking it might not be a bad idea that we do some sort of like a branding revamp in the sense of like hey like the you know, like the new version of like the all here's the logo, you know, the, the the whole ecosystem in a way. We put some logo into it and then say, and now we're part of a foundation. Just so that I we focus it. this, yeah, so that we don't focus on the fact that we're changing foundation because it's at the end of the day it's useless for the for the users, they don't care about that. But I mean, unless they're looking at the governance and so on. But what they care is like, hey, here's people who are highly motivated, you know, this project has a lot of like life and and we are presenting here our logo. People get excited about these things. Yeah, and I mean, uh, like if we can announce it together with the message that this is increased investment and now Kanto is joining in a big way and this and that, right? We can like build a story how this is not just um, something we had to do because UCF was dying, but we're doing this because you know, yeah, this is a big, exactly. big deal, right? It's like- uh, And maybe, a, yeah. a new and maybe we can also really... use the- yeah. And the new logo, and maybe we can also add, you know, the cart to join in and so on, you know, like, uh, and so we, we should, you know, like put this in a way that is positive, like, hey, more energy into the project. I love it. Yeah, it's definitely is a positive change in my, in my view. Um, I, I was really excited to have Joby join the Urban Computing Foundation because of these projects that we get to work on. And I'm really excited about the opportunity of merging into OpenJS because of how awesome I think that the foundation has done putting putting this group together over there and and being so welcoming to you know all of our all of our projects um, and really recognizing all the hard work that we all do. Cool. So guys, I have to go now, but I mean, I just uh, just want to say like uh, fully fully supportive of this and thank you for all the work. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. All right, I think that concludes it. Um, yeah, so we will start it to the process and um, let you guys know what are the next steps. And likely there won't be much for the project has to do is mainly on the tech to move over the existing documentations and creating a subgroup with OS. But um, Brian, so we will still have our tech meeting January, or I think that or we can right. just okay, great. I mean, so with, that's... whether it's <laughs> whether it's a tech meeting or whether it's uh, whether it's a tech meeting under the Urban Computing Foundation or under OpenJS Foundation or you know or whatever, it, it hopefully should not affect you. <laughs> great, sounds good. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, for the inputs. Um,
we'll, we'll meet again. Happy New Year and have a nice holiday. Yeah, enjoy your holidays and uh, have a good start into 2022. All right. Thank you. Happy New Year. Bye. Happy New Year. Bye bye.